Good afternoon, everyone. We'd like to call this Orangeburg County Council meeting of March the 18th, 2019, to order. We're going to ask Councilman Ravenel to give us a note of thanks before we proceed. Let us bow our head in a word of prayer. Father God, we want to thank you for allowing us to come together this day to conduct the business of this county. Father God, we want to thank you for government everywhere. Father God, we want to just Thank you for the many blessings that you bestowed down upon us throughout the years. Father, as we make the decision, or try to make the decision for the best of the citizens that we represent, we ask that you be in the midst. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I hope each and every council person have had the opportunity to look at the minutes of the March 4th meeting. And if you have, I would entertain a motion and second that those minutes be received as written. So moved. Second. Moved by the Frazier, Dolores, and second by Ms. Cooper Smith. That the minutes be received as written. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposes? The ayes have it, the motion is carried. Again, we'd like to welcome you to our meetings and for those of you who, to our meeting, and for those of you who have maybe never attended our meeting, we have a public comment section at the beginning of our meeting. And we have public comments of two areas. <clears throat> the first uh, public comment is on agenda items. That means when I open the floor for public comments on any agenda item on the agenda, you may come forward. If that agenda item has a public hearing, wait until we get to that item before you come forward if you want to comment on that particular item, such as in the audit ordinance of third reading and public hearing. And that's item number two. The other area is a public comment section for anything you would like to bring before council, you will come up and, uh, and address council on whatever issue you think you have at that time. The floor is now open for public comment on agenda items only. But that's, that's, that's wait until you get to oh, that item. Thank you. <laughs> Just any other agenda items that's not don't have a public hearing section. If you have a public hearing section, do it on that. now we'll close that and open the floor for public comments on other matters. Any other matters? Please state what your matter is and your name for the records, please. Again, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is John A. Snell, S-N-E-L-L. I appeared before the council several weeks ago concerning my case number 7214. Uh, this left me because of maybe some consequences <coughs> for the time. What happened is I spoke to a uh, city administrator and he said that he spoke with the sheriff about the incident with my trailer in he apologized. I have not received anything from the sheriff's office as of this date in regards to my trailer being stolen, in regards to the officer not showing up, in regards to the victim advocacy office. I have not received anything from the victim advocacy office. I have right now, I don't have anything in regards to my, the incident that we, I brought up earlier. And um, the apologies is not helping me with my situation. I have not received anything from that in, in, the, in that regards. And I would, I'm asking counsel to please help me bring some resolution to this situation. Because the only thing I wanted, wanted from the sheriff's office was a report of why the officer did not show up for the hearing and my case was thrown out. And I have not got a response from the sheriff's office at, uh, as of this date of why he did not show up. The only thing one of the officer told me was it was an internal matter. I need something in writing from them stating why that was not present. That's as a voter, as a taxpayer, and I'm asking counsel for your help. Please help me bring this to some kinds of resolution because we need answers as a voter and as a taxpayer. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
sure yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I followed up with the sheriff, and he said they had uh, several meetings, and he also said that they had apologized to the gentleman. And the information that was sent to me from the sheriff is what I showed him, and that's what he uh, disagrees with. So, as far as I was concerned, I talked to them about the case. They said that they had met with him, and they did the investigation. They found out who stole the trailer, um, got that person uh, uh, arrested. Um, but for some reason, when they had the court date, as he said, the officer didn't show up, so got thrown out. They went back to try to have it re-prosecuted, but it was not. Um, I don't know the legalities behind that, but I know the sheriff's office did make an attempt to go back and have it reopened. Um, you would have to seek the sheriff to get a clarification on that. but. You know, after that, that's, you know, on, on my level as county administrator and your level as elected officials, um, the sheriff is an elected official that he has to be responsible to this gentleman. So what he has to do is um, probably seek another meeting with the sheriff and, and ask for clarification on that uh, in writing. Because I think what they were under the impression of after the conversation you guys had, um, I think they felt like that was the end of it, but you were seeking a apology or some type of explanation in writing. Correct, is what you just said, right? I'm, I'm seeking something in writing why the officer wasn't present. Okay. And I did not receive that. And also, uh, handled internally doesn't help me with with the officer not showing up. That's not that's not a standard operating operation procedure for the sheriff office. That if you just tell somebody you're sorry or you apologize, and what what, what happens after that? That's not cool. That's not good police community policing. That's not good sheriff. That's not good policy. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have. Sean, did you get? Um, I, it's my understanding that the trailer was retrieved. Did you get it back? I have not received anything. I I contacted the uh, what they call the task force, recovery task force, and I was told that there it was not in that bag in it big uh, raid that they did, it was not present, it, it was not there. Ms. Cooper, I'm being lied to. I called over there to the Victim Advocacy Office and they told me that the case was, uh, the guy was on the hold. And I said, this guy's gonna get out. <clears throat> and I was informed that a whole mean that someone was going to bring him over before his trial date. He was he was already locked up for grand larceny. No, he was locked up for strong arm robbery and burglary, and he was doing time. And he was in whole uh, uh, making on probation. I said, "We got a probation. He's going to get out. He's going to walk." No, we got him in hold. And uh, when I called to, after the case was over, and I spoke to the officer. He said, no, the case not over. The case was over. This was the week after. Um, <laughs> Mr. Snell, I think we I appreciate you bringing that back to us, but I think we need to, um, as administrator say, I'll have him and recall, but the you know, sheriff is an elected official. Right. And we, we can't control his office. You understand that? But we will definitely check on it again and see Else. Thank you, Mr. General. Wright. Thank you. But, but as a, like I say, as a citizen, I just think that you all need to know the way that I was that, that was treated. That that's not. Any other? If not, we will close the public comment section of our agenda, and we're going to have to our uh, regular agenda. The first one is a presentation. <coughs> And the presentation to the Zeus Industrial Product Inc. Mr. Chair, we ask that we uh, move that forward. The individual we were presented to had a okay. um, family emergency, and we would like to move forward to the All right, sorry about that. Yes, All right, the other was resolution and ordinance. The first item on the agenda is a, is a resolution to amend the amended and reinstate agreement for development for a joint county industrial park effective as of May 17th, 2010, between the county of Orangeburg and Dorchester County, providing for the development of a jointly owned and operated industrial business park 
so as to include additional properties in the county as part of the joint industrial park and other matters related there too. Uh, this, this, this new yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, under the state laws, um, it's allowable for two um, adjoining counties to be able to enter in a, a, a joint county industrial park um, agreement, and this is for sake of tax incentives that would be given to industries that are located in that area, and I will yield to the county attorney for different information you require. Tell you what the paperwork is I can't tell you too much about the underlying transactions right. as we're all aware there's the 99% and the 1% uh, this is uh, a resolution that if you accept uh, then the county receives 1% of the fee of the other tax being paid by this Dorchester company thank you so much uh, any questions from council not I would entertain a motion and a second for pass of this resolution. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Moved by Ms. Cooper Smith and second by Ms. Uh, Lois Frazier that we pass the resolution as explained. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposes? The ayes have it. The motion carried. Item number two is it's an ordinance. Uh, this is the third reading and a public hearing. This is an artist amending the chapter 34 of the Orange County Court of Ordinance regarding solid waste, including violation penalties and other related matters. <coughs> um, can we have, um, Madam Attorney, can we have a um, public hearing on this? And, and somebody, once it's over, if they, if they make a motion to move it, you don't have to have it no more. You need to have a public hearing. There was a public hearing that was held the last time council met, um, but because of a 15-day rule that had to do with advertising and changing the meeting to a different time, this is the official public hearing for this. Okay. And then it would be third reading after that. Thank you so much. The floor is now open for a public hearing at this time. On this item. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the council. My name is Stefan Edwards. I am the president of the Orangeburg, Bamberg, Calhoun County Home Builders Association. And I'm here to speak on that particular ordinance. First of all, we thank you for giving us this opportunity. Um, we have, um, this is brought to our attention recently at our last meeting, and we have some concerns um, about this particular ordinance. We understand the uh, the spirit of the ordinance and, and we have no problems with that. We just would like a little bit more specificity in this ordinance so that we're clear on who the violators are and what needs to happen throughout this process. We'd like to be a little bit less subjective if possible. Don't want one person kind of dictating uh, who's right, who's wrong, if we're a little clear on the ordinance. But we appreciate you taking a closer look at it. Um, we'll adhere to whatever advice the council has at this point. Thank you so much for hearing us. And also, Mr. Hugh wants to be My name is Hugh Hicklin. Uh, I own Hicklin Maintenance LLC. We rent dumpsters in Orangeburg County. Uh, I would just I appreciate the interest you've had in this item and uh, would like for you just to see if you could look at it a little closer and uh, maybe you could help us out a little bit with some clarity on some terms and uh, just try to help have a little bit better understanding of what the requirements are and what we can do going forward to help the county. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Hicklin, and thank you, Mr. Edwards, for your comments. Yes, right here. Also, you heard the comments of the hearing. It's time that it's up for third reading. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chair. In light of uh, what we've heard this afternoon, uh, I move we postpone third reading and uh, go back to the committee for our next regular meeting and have a committee meeting to do some clarification on it. But I would like to mention also, and uh, maybe need to correct, but this is third reading and uh, any changes or corrections in this ordinance would have to be unanimous by all council members. That correct? That's correct unless you decided to go back and, and start the process over. Okay. But uh, just want to make, make that clear. But anyway, I, I moved that we carry back and maybe do a little more explaining and, and 
clar clarifying exactly what we mean uh, by mixed load is very broad in, in our ordinance and uh, we can go back and clarify it a little bit. Uh, we we pull upon third reading and go back to committee. Second. Second. Uh, Move and second and, and discussion. You got to say, right? Yeah. Did I hear you correctly? Um, you said um, if the um, vote would have to be unanimous on the next and third reading, if we make changes. That's if correct. we make changes. Yeah. But if not, if you stay like it is, vote either way, um, five, two, or whatever, and still care. No, no, it got to be unanimous. If we change it, change everybody has to vote unanimously. Yeah. Change, change, change it. Yeah. But if change. we don't change it, it will be five, two, or whatever. whatever. That's good. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I don't mind going back. But should we change it? I don't want all the teeth taken out of the I think I was, I, I spoke previously about making audiences with no teeth in it. And when you do that, I think you weaken the council. And uh, even if I, I vote to go back, but let's make sure when we decide to bring that back in the full citizens of Lawrenceburg County that we have teeth in it. I think that's important. That's that. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'm, I'm like Mr. Owens. They, uh, I don't think we need to change nothing or just clarify. clarify. Just clarify. You know, I think I think everything about where we need to be. But just be sure, you know, you know, we identifying if it's a 300 pound piece of a block or a steel or 500 or 50 pound. You know, just you know, get a little more clear on it, and then go, you know, move on with it. All right. Uh, it has been moved. Mr. Lemon, second by Ms. Cooper Smith, I think it was. And we carried this forward back to the committee for some little deeper clarification. All in favor of it, please say aye. Aye. Any opposers? Ayes have it. Appointment of Board and Commission and committees. Uh, here is appointment to the Santee Fire District for District 2. Are you to appoint from District? Mr. Mr. Chairman and Committee, um, I'm Mr. Charles W. Woods, 424 St. Louis, South Carolina. <coughs> uh, request for appointing him to the St. Louis Commission role. That is the favor of the motion. Second. Moved by Mr. Ravenel and second by Mr. Abel Livingston that we appoint Mr. Charles Woods. Fire District for, uh, District 2. All in favor of it, please say aye. 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 Opposes? Aye there. B is an appointment to the Arnberg County Human Relations Council for District 4. Yes, I'm going to give a list. Mr. Chairman, uh, John H. Bonnet Jr., 2234. Uh, Slab land the road nieces. I would like to board him. Second. Okay, with a motion by Mr. Haven Livingston from District 4 to appoint Mr. Donnie Point Jr. And second by Mr. Harry Wimley for that vote. All in favor of it, please say aye. Aye. Any opposes? Ayes have it. The motion is carried. Next item is an update from the Public Health and Safety Committee. Uh, I'll yield to its uh, chairman, Mr. William B. Owens. As the chairman, the Public Health and Safety Committee made the motion for a new audience to transfer past 10 areas of nearby property on the map that was granted by the city and county fire department. That's a motion. That's a motion, sir. Can I get a second? Second. Moved by Mr. Billy B. Owens and second by Mr. Hibbert Livingston. Yes, sir. I'd like to explain a little bit about it. Okay, well, I'm getting a motion in a second and I'll let you okay. on that motion. Go ahead. Um, it it comes to our uh, attention that, um, that in our process of, of working with the city and forming a fire district uh, around the five mile area of the city, that um, when 
two fire departments, uh, the city and the county, got together They came up with some class 10 areas around the edge of the city uh, where the people were receiving uh, fire ratings and, and class ratings to the city and now that they're identified as class 10, uh, some of the insurance companies that keyed on in on this and, and these folks is in this area's insurance premium has increased drastically. In fact, um, some, some folks have doubled. Um, but yet, they were within two or three miles of a, of a um, county fire department, but over five miles from a city fire department. So in an effort to help these citizens um, get back to a class rating that what the county has at least uh, five, uh, four or five in that area, we are working off the map that, that was uh, drafted and put together by uh, Fire Chief of the City of Orangeburg and the Fire Commission uh, of Orangeburg County to identify these areas. So now we are in the process of forming an ordinance that we can pull these class 10 areas back into the county and therefore these folks can get a reduced uh, insurance premium plus they'll be within a five mile area of a, of a fire department. Um, Mr. Chairman, may I add, it will also provide that no person will get a 10 rating for their housing facility. So that's the purpose of, the, of this ordinance. This has nothing to do with the ordinance uh, that we're working right now with the city in creating a fire district um, around the city and work with the city and being part of the Orangeburg County fire system. All this is, in, is doing is trying to get these 10, class 10 areas into an area where they can get a better fire rating and get insurance reduced. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Owens, and thank you, Mr. Grimley, for explaining that so that everybody don't get, make sure that when they pick up the paper, they don't look at something and go off on a tangent. So it was moving second, have been moving second. Moved by Mr. Owens and second by Mr. David Livingston. So all in favor of that motion that we move forward with trying to have that as a ordinance is clarified by saying aye. Uh -huh. We may oppose this step, but ayes have it. Next is the report from the Public Works Committee. I yield to this chairperson, Mr. Jerry Rowley. Chairman and Council, we have four items have four item on our agenda long discussion and uh, the first one was um, trying to come up with some ways to recruit uh, damage for uh, funding for damage when they have construction crews such as uh, loggers or even people that were installing, installing these um, uh, solar system uh, we came up with uh, uh, draft of a revolution and uh, we pretty much have it intact and uh, it was put in place that we was recommending that uh, it was be like a $10,000 fee to go into a um, uh, I want to say a pot so a security bond a security bond and out of that if the road be damaged uh, we have the monies in place to draw from to repair the road. Uh, it may cost more or less, but we have that in place as a start. <clears throat> That's one of the recommendations coming from the Public Works Committee. Uh, that is form of a motion. Second. Uh, that, 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 uh, that's right there. That's starting the motion to start yeah. the orders from that. Yes, I'm starting the orders. It has been moved and second moved by Mr. Ravenel, Public Works uh, Committee Chairperson, and second by Mr. Willie B. Owens, that we uh, take that as a motion so that we will start the process of putting that on, on the agenda as an ordinance to be passed by council. All in favor of it, may be known by saying aye. Aye. Any opposes, the ayes have it, the motion is kept. Second item that the uh, convenience site that uh, it's recommended that uh, we install security cameras for surveillance and, and um, kind of take 
keep a watch at the thing that goes around the convenience site. And this was just a recommendation. Uh, uh, Mr. Henry Summers was in, and the individuals that works at the convenience site, <clears throat> they're probably going to come up with a, a grant form, a grant to secure some funding for cameras in that, uh, to for this camera secured. And that's just a recommendation. That's that's not to uh, be voted on. <clears throat> Third, on our um, agenda was a um, discussion about uh, Nell, Nell's Road. Um, <clears throat> they wanted to, some individual wanted to have it closed. But um, we decided to uh, take some precautionary measures so far as have Mr. Allison, Bill Allison, to to um, the GIS to identify how long we've been maintaining the road and et cetera. But as a committee, we voted to let it stay open as, as stand. It'd be a possible in, in being that as a form of motion as well. Yes, so so move, Mr. Chairman. Moved by <coughs> Mr. Ravenel, the chairperson of the Public Works, and second by Mr. Hill Livingston, one of the committee person for that that um, we continue to maintain the road as we usually do <coughs> on Nettles Road. All in favor, please let me know by saying aye. 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 And opposes. Ayes have it. Motion is carried. And the fourth item on the agenda was um, we had um, kind of bridge had been being inspected, and, um, and we came up with the. Um, recommendation that we will continue to have the traffic on this road as usual. At the end of your report, sir? Yes, sir. We, we, we didn't make this position, Mr. Chairman, of the one going at the site at the cameras. The, what we did was we uh, to give the green light for the public works director to go ahead on and look into <coughs> See if they can come up with a grant to get that done. Okay. We just give them the, to come back with more information on that. They got to, you know, but they got to bring my to go ahead and see if they can pursue grants to see if we can get those cameras there. Yes, yes, sir. And I think we need to inform the public that just because you're on public property, it does not mean that uh, you don't need to be careful. Because if you fall, it's not always our responsibility. We can't take responsibility for people who can't slip when they shouldn't be slipping. Uh, make sure you do due do, do diligence and take care when you're trying to dump your garbage and other materials in our dumpster at public site. This time we would like a vote for executive session and the executive session on the economic development update for five projects. CCIP update, uh, QM group update, project Polar update, project Lion update, project Huntley update. And unfortunately, we go in and say for those items. So moved, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> by Mr. Owens and second by Mr. Frazier that we go in and say for the following items that has been listed. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposers? I always have it, promotions carried. Before we ask for adjournment, any person has any, any council person has any comment? Well, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a comment from the council this one. Any comment from the council? If not, Mr. Administrator, go ahead. Mr. Chairman and council, I just uh, think we need to recognize over the weekend we had a lot of um, uh, wrecks and different situations that taxed our first responders a whole lot, but I'm proud to say that men and women of our um, fire, volunteer fire department, our emergency services, our, our medical emergency services, as well as the sheriff's department and public safety with the city of Orangeburg um, did a hell of a job to number one, uh, work the fires at Corona, the accidents on I-95, the accidents on the North Road. Uh, we had a lot of major incidents that, that stretched our capabilities to the limit, but we had the equipment, the manpower, and the training and the willing volunteers to be able to work with the citizens. I wish I could say there were no fatalities throughout those times, but they were. But at the same time, 
uh, those men and women did what they did and saved a lot of other lives as well. So i uh, just like to commend them because our, our system is filled with volunteers on both sides. So we need to make sure that regardless of whether it's a volunteer on the uh, side of the firefighters or the reserve deputies or anybody who would call into duty on these times, um, it's good to know that you as council has done your job as being able to fund the county so that we have the instruments, the apparatuses, and the training um, that they need to be able to do their job. Thank you. Mr. Young, I heard a large boom. Nobody can explain to me where that large boom came from. Did we have an explosion or anything in the county? That was the boom that came from the fire at Corona Apartments. Where you live at, you probably heard that. Well, I went out there, but yes, the people out there couldn't. They really told me they know where it came from. Well, they're still investigating it, but um, they pretty much, um, that's the consensus of what everybody heard, the boom and then the fire started. So it's being investigated um, by, or I think, state arson or public safety one of the two. Thank you. Where, where are the people that, um, whose apartments were, the tenant where the tenants whose apartments were there? The Red Cross is working with them. Um, in some cases, some of them stay with family, and I think the Red Cross issued some um, vouchers or whatever to some hotels or whatever for a limited basis. But the, you know, I'm glad to say the apartment manager and the owner's situation, they were out there on hand and they did not duck or shirk from their responsibilities. So I'm sure they'll be filing the insurance claims and things of that nature. But um, for a person, for, for public information though, when you're living in an apartment in public housing or whatever, your personal contents have to be assured by yourself under a personal policy. Because once something like that happens, the owner will get, re they will get reimbursed for the building, but your contents have to be insured separately by yourself. So hopefully um, most of them were insured, but if not, um, they will seek assistance through the Red Cross and the Salvation Army, um, who are being great partners for us. Thank you. I just want to reemphasize one thing. We'll be working on our budget in a couple of weeks. Red American Red Cross is what I heard, guys. Y'all remember that? And Salvation Army. And Salvation Army. I'd like to say I'm I'm not trying to advertise my business, but um, I do a, a tour service. I work the Interstate I-95 a lot of the times. And Lord knows, this past weekend I seen a lot of accidents out there. And when I said I seen a lot of accidents. I mean, there's a lot of careless act. Mm -hmm. uh, people uh, driving, I mean, furious, I mean, 80, 85, and 90 miles an hour on the interstate. Patrolman um, said he caught the guy on the opposite side of the road driving 100 and over 100. And uh, he said, well, they don't need to go after him because he would never catch him. He'd be halfway out of the county by the time uh, he tried to pursue him. But nevertheless, uh, I witnessed one fatality. Uh, on Friday night, I think it was. Three major accidents this past weekend, and all of it came from carelessness, for what I see. I'm not the judge nor the jury, but uh, <clears throat> first of all, we need to slow down some. We need to slow down. Uh, people just take uh, and buy these little cars, they're airtight. When I said airtight, like you sit in your front room, and you, you, you think you're not driving over a speed, but you're driving the speed of 80, 90, 95 miles an hour. And if you were to hit something, that car is going to explore. And some bad things are going to happen because of it. That's what I've been witnessing out there now. So, tell your loved ones, and I, I know we in this room, we're kind of seasoning the things, so we don't do that. But these are mostly young people who are out there uh, driving as such. Want to inform me of that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ramirez. I said, like, I said like this, and I'm going to quit. Um, I tell people all the time, I said, I'm, I'm like the funeral hall man. I said, I'm going to be sitting by the phone waiting for somebody to die, but somebody have an accident, I'm there. <laughs> I get you. I get you. All right, any other comments on that one? Two lane road, yellow lines. People don't pay those yellow lights any attention. This driver could be going up a hill. I've seen some close accidents. Unavoidable, they're unavoidable. But um, people just don't, they're not, they're not, they just don't care. 
Don't think you can get it in there. Too big of a hurry. More cars yeah, like the road. More cars, more people, more lives. More accidents. Yeah. All right, well, thank you all for your input. And uh, again, thank each and every one of you for coming out. And again, uh, I echo what Mr. Young said. Thank all of the first responders and all the firemen and all the, the, all, the, all the people that works these kind of situations voluntarily of their own time. We really appreciate it. I have a motion and a second that we adjourn. Thank you. Second by Mr. Owens that we adjourn. Thank you for coming.